So today, we have a little bit different adventure for you guys. The owner of the yard has asked us to look at an old wooden boat, which I've showed in my boatyard tour. It's a 110-year-old Dickies yacht uh, called Joybird, built in... The year it was built is kind of iffy. The previous owner or the current owner, he thought that it was built in 1913. However, there are log entries available from 1911, so it's at least 1911. Um, the owner has had it for 60-something years, and he's elderly and in poor health. And so the family and the yard, they're going to give this boat away to somebody. So this is a free boat. He wants me to go over and survey it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you're ever looking at a free boat, what to look for, what are good signs and what are bad signs, and if it's worth it to you. So things you're going to need to do this. You're going to need a pair of gloves. Very important to have work gloves. There might be splinters, there might be screws or nails poking out, there might be spiders. You want to have work gloves. Then you're going to need a marlin spike. I prefer a marlin spike knife. This one's mine, that's Ryan's. This is your number one rot finding tool, is a marlin spike, okay? Next, a tape measure. It's good to have. You're going to want a small hammer. I use a little ball-peen hammer. This is for sounding the hull. You're going to want a picking tool. This, I use it as a reefing hook. It was like a carpet knife. I ground the blade off so it doesn't tear up cotton and stuff, but it helps to pick at stuff. You're going to want scrapers. All right, so you can chip back loose paint and look at the wood underneath. All right, you need that. A Leatherman, just, you don't know, you need the pliers, you could use a screwdriver. It's good to have a Leatherman with you. Prying tools. You can use like a flat bar, like a pry bar, but I prefer these because they get in small, tight spaces. So you want to have prying tools. You want your safety glasses. Very important, bring a mask uh, of some kind. There could be mold dust, could be... Whatever, sawdust could be anything you just don't want to be breathing. So you want to bring a mask, a mask, uh, and your coffee. Very, very, very important, have your coffee. As we make our way over to the boat here, I want to talk about a few things. So first off, when you're looking at a free boat, there is the saying, nothing is more expensive than a free boat. Well, this is fairly true. However, there are different conditions of free boats. You know, in the world of wooden boats, you can sometimes find them really good deals on a boat that is pretty solid, really. You can also find other crap. You want, the first thing you want to look at is the, the previous owner or the current owner. What did they do with it? Did they take care of it? How did they have it? You know, in, in the case of Joybird, this guy, he had the boat for 60 something years. He's He's in his 90s. I met him, he's a really nice guy. He's just, you know, in failing health. Um, but he sailed all over in the thing, and you can assume if he had it for 60 years, he took care of it. And this is something unique in the world of wooden boats. I don't think you'll ever find a fiberglass boat, because they haven't been around that long, somebody that's had it for 60 years. It just doesn't happen. So this is a plus. If it's just somebody that got it, thinking that they could fix it up and then didn't, don't know about it, they got in over their head, that's a big warning sign uh, because who knows what they did. Okay, so here we are. The very first thing you want to do is on the outside. You want to look on the outside. So grab the bag and come with me, Ryan. The first thing we need to look at, we can ascertain a lot about the boat from the outside, right? So the very first thing, just the condition of everything. Obviously, the boat's pretty dry, you know, the, uh, the paint is kind of cracked and chipping, and so you can assume you probably have to recalk, which isn't a big deal. I mean, you can see here, we have some things coming in, but we're going to use some tools for that here in a second to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But the very first thing, look at the fairness of the hull. You know, get really close to it, and look how it lays on the jack stands. Every single jack stand, right? This boat, surprisingly for its age, I mean, this thing's what, at least 110 years old? It's, from the outside, it's actually in pretty dang good shape, you know? Um, we're looking for signs of hogging, sagging. Hogging and sagging. That's where 
the 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 vessel is squatting this way, right? So kind of squishing over the uh, the jack stands, and also you're looking at the shear. You want to look at the shear of the vessel. That's when it's doing this, right? So like the back is breaking. Okay, that's the first thing. From a distance, you can see hogging and sagging, and I'm not seeing any signs of that really. Um, let's look at the other jack stands. So what we're looking for here, we're looking for planks heaving, buckling, deforming, signs of structural damage on the inside. So you have to think there's frames in here, right? Like ribs, there's frames. And if those frames have damage, typically it'll show here at the jack stands. Any good yard will put the jack stands on framing. You know, they'll try to find a frame, they'll tap it, they'll sound it with a hammer, and they'll put the jack stands on the frames. And you see here, look, this one is actually pretty good. I'm surprised. I, I was expecting, being so old, to have some serious damage. So that's the first thing you check. For comparison, we'll look at the hull of this old wheeler. It's in very, very poor condition, and I have never been inside it. I don't need to go inside it to see this. I'll show you. Look here. You see at the jack stands? Look how the hull is doing. It's curving like this. See? We'll go to the next one. This one's really bad. See? Look at that. Look how buckled it is. See? The whole thing, if you look along it, the jack stand is sinking into the hull. And you look here, see the line of fasteners that go down to it? That is right at a frame. So that means the frame is toast. The framing right there is toast. So we know that without ever going in the boat. So the very first thing you look at, how fair is the hull? Okay, now we're gonna look at obvious things. You know, obvious things. There is a reason it's free, right? So what are those reasons? This boat has dried quite a bit. And you see that? So there, this section needs to be replaced. The rudder chewed up with shipworm, okay? So that's another thing we've got to check is shipworm. But right now we're doing obvious things. So we know obviously this has to be replaced. If you look down here, that's pretty gone. So that's got to be replaced. You know, if this were a fiberglass boat, I have seen fiberglass boats with damage here and there. I don't even know how you fix that. I'm not a fiberglass guy. On a wooden boat, however, you literally just cut it out. You take it off and you just put a new hunk of wood in there. It's so easy. I mean, that's why you want a wooden boat in the first place. It's just easy, easy, easy to fix. So then the next thing you check is you want to sound the hull, right? So you want to do some soundings. We're listening for dead spots. You want to hear a nice clacky ring like that. You want to hear something that sounds good, that sounds like a saw. So, okay, so hear that? It's not exactly a real solid ring. That's solid. It's, this still isn't too bad. When you get to a rotten area, like that. I mean, and this is obvious here. You got this cracking stuff, so that's solid. And then you can hear it dull. You hear the difference? Yeah. Hear that? Crap. You can hear it. Now here's, here's something, see here, do this. A lot of people stick a length of hose in their through holes, I do too, to keep the water from running down the through hole, and getting all over the hole. But see there, there's water coming out. Where's that water coming from? We're on the hard, so where's it coming from? So obviously, we don't know what this through hole is just yet. This could be a sink. 
like maybe there's some water in the sink and it's just dripping out still. That's a possibility. But it could be something else. Um, if it's a through hole, geez, I would assume it's, you know, it's got to be a sink, a toilet. This far forward on the boat, it's not going to be engine or anything. And it's not like the deck is just going to drain through the bilge. So, but we need to make sure there could be a hose failing. The boat could be taken on rainwater. It could be anything. So when you see something like this, make a mental note. You've got to look at it. And the garbage strake might might need some attention. So the hull is a little too high to sound anything above the water line. We can try, but you know, from the looks of it, the paint being in decent condition, it's cracked because it's dry, but I don't see any I don't see any real signs that it uh that it really needs help. Now there obviously is some iron, but I spoke to the owner of uh, back when he was hanging out on the boat a bit and supposedly this thing is copper or bronze fastened or both and at one point i think it was iron fastened i think and he replaced over time fasteners so there is iron and it's i'm not seeing massive signs of iron sickness i'm seeing a little rust staining but iron sickness is when all the iron fasteners are just streaming you could see in the What's happening is the fasteners are rusting, wasted, so they're not holding anything. Plus, they're expanding and can damage the wood. But I'm not seeing, there's not, obviously, this doesn't have a, a ton of iron fastenings. Okay, so that leads us to our next thing. Will you, uh, will you grab a scraper? All right, five and one. Now, we can see the wood here, but let's say you get to a boat. It's painted and you can't see what the wood is. We're just going to chip it back and we're going to take a look. See? So this is very important. We want to see the condition of the wood and potentially what kind of wood it is. I am not sure the exact, but we know, looking at this, this is a soft wood. So it could be built in that part of the world. Could be Scots pine, could be larch pine. Uh, but it's definitely a soft wood. Could be cedar, you know? I, I don't know, just looking at it right off. Uh but this will give us an idea and which there are different that means different things you know uh if it were a teak hull for example it might not be any rot um being a soft wood the planks will take up a lot quicker um but so that's the scraper scrape it back ascertain the kind of wood and the condition of the wood and the condition of the wood overall is in pretty dang good shape you know you don't I'm not seeing a ton of checking. Look at the hood ends up here. You know, look at the stem. The big, thick timbers in vessels. These are what go, right? This is what starts cracking and checking to pieces. Um, as the boat dries, the planks shrink. When the planks shrink, it shucks paint. The paint becomes loose and starts shucking off. The more paint that shucks off, the more moisture can escape the wood, the drier the wood gets and it cracks. The big, thick timbers, like the stem, the deadwood, the forefoot areas of the keel, big, thick timbers, they're going to crack before, say, planks will, right? Planks will crack. You'll see checking from the end grain, and I don't see any checking in the end grain. I just don't. I mean, it looks, the end grain and the plank ends looks okay. But, so, the reason why the big thick timbers uh, check is because this thick of a piece of wood, it's going to lose moisture from the surface before it loses moisture on the inside much, much quicker. When that happens, imagine, imagine stretching a piece of rubber or something over a cylinder and you're stretching and stretching and stretching. Eventually it tears. That's what happens is the, the skin, if it, as it were, is shrinking quicker than the inside. So this is getting smaller, quicker than the inside, and so it splits. And uh, so the, the number one place to check, stem, forefoot, dead wood, thick, thick hunks of wood. And, and yeah, the paint's loose, but stem is okay. Dead wood we know is bad. Uh, it's gotta go. But 
this is all right. Paint's loose. Okay, so that's that's that. Now, I would probably suggest with well, the boat been dry this long, especially with the issues you have with the planks, it's probably you're going to need to reconk it anyway. But let's say it's not so obvious. You know, it's on the hard. It's a free boat. You're not splashing it, so you don't have to worry about creating a leak because you're going to have to fix it anyway. Hook. Now, you just want to pick at it. You're going to get in a seam and just pull it out. Pull the putty out. Putty's dry, of course, in this thing. And I want to get the cotton. I don't know if you could see that, but I can feel cotton is... The planks have shrunk up enough that the cotton's not doing anything. And more interesting, it's not cotton. This is oakum. Oakum is rope fibers with pine tar. So this being such an old boat, they actually used oakum, which on this size of a boat is pretty rare. But the oakum's done, see? I've seen oakum that's, that's hemp rope fibers. I've also seen it where it's like jute, depending on where it was built. But so, you know the boat needs to be recalked. This boat for sure. But if you didn't know, what you do is you just get in. Oh, look at that. Look, I can pull the whole seam out. See that? See? And you see how it's smashed? The planks have just... Look at that. The planks have, have shrunk a lot. This has been smashed beyond its ability to come back because it was in the water so long, and this is a danger. Any wooden boat you spend enough time out of the water you have to recalk it because this isn't going to swell up again this is done right and that's a danger with any wooden boat even good condition that's why i want to get my boat in the water uh before i have to recalk the entire thing i've already recalked a lot on the top but i don't want to recalk the bottom i may have to but we'll see at any rate so we know now we knew before we're looking at it that we'd have to recalk it but we know now that that the caulking is bad so if it just pulls out like that if it's smashed uh cotton a lot of times will look okay and you know what this i mean it's not unfortunately if the boat hadn't been out of the water so long this is probably usable i mean it's not when it deteriorates when the caulking deteriorates on a boat it turns to powder like you'll go to, to reef it out and it's just powder comes out you know it's just done it rots and it's gone but uh this isn't in too horrible condition okay surprisingly enough and even though we can't use the caulking, the caulking being in good condition is a good sign. It means that the inside was probably watertight and maybe we won't see so much damage. So uh, let's look at the stern real quick. So there's no transom, you know, double end design. But it all looks pretty solid. The other thing you need to check are the condition of the spars, the mast, the rigging, stuff like that. Uh, in this case, it's laying on the ground. Um, to be honest, this is the worst possible place you could ever see spars, is just laying on the ground. Now, they are blocked up, so they're not in direct ground contact, so you might not have termites and stuff eating them to pieces. But, you know, if you, if you ever go and you see a boat and the spars are on the ground, you can pretty much forget it. The spars are going to be shot. Now, this, like I said, they are blocked up, so they're not directly on the ground. Um, hey, Brian, can you hand me the hammer? Okay, yeah. See here? Listen. That's what we want to hear. Ring, ring, ring. A beautiful, beautiful sound. Listen to this. Yeah. So this checking, most likely what's happened, water's gotten in here, and it's rotten inside. So you'll peel this off, and it'll be rot inside. That's what you can guess. So solid on the outside, you could sand that and varnish it and you wouldn't know, which is scary. So you got to listen. That's what you want to hear. This, no good. Means the wood on the outside is good, the wood on the inside is rotten. Good, bad, good, bad. Hear that? Gets bad again. And you see what you can see? I didn't even see this. Look, see the check? So, and then you see the check. The checking, because like I said, the surface shrinks quicker than the inside it splits water goes in there and sits in there has nowhere to go and then it rots yep so the mizzen same thing sounds like crap so you know depending on what you wanted to do oh no that's gone it there's the way i do it is you know 
is 70% of it still there? If 70% is still there, then maybe I can look at scarfing on new wood or repairing it, you know. If, if, if less than 70% of the original is there, just replace it. You know, build a new thing. I mean, because you're going to be chasing it. And in this case, there's maybe 30% that's good. So the, the spars are done. The rigging is shot. So this all needs to be replaced. Before we even get in there, some things I don't care about that I'm going to explain. Free boat. I don't care about the engine. I don't care about the propulsion. I don't care about the propeller. I don't care about any of that stuff. None of it. Doesn't matter at all to me. That's just money. There's no skill. You hire somebody if you can't fix it and you put it together. But far, farther to the point, if it's an old diesel engine, which I don't know if this one's being that old, who knows how old that propeller is. Look, it looks pretty ancient. Man, that thing looks old. Um, it's interesting that you can adjust the pitch of the prop on something so old. But I mean, this could have been repowered at any time. The uh, thing is you can rebuild an old diesel engine. Um, you can buy one and a benefit of a wooden boat it's much easier to just repower it with something else because you can build up new engine bed rails lickety split no problems or a fiberglass boat it's a little more difficult but uh okay let's uh let's go up top and see what what's up i've never been on board this boat so i have no idea what we're about to see <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. let's see well, that's beautiful. It looks like uh, with the with the ribbon grain, this looks like some kind of almost mahogany. And I guess it's got some kind of water seal on here, like a teak sealer. Okay. Okay, teak decks. Hmm. Yeah. The decks look to be in fairly poor condition. That's for sure. All right. Let's see how solid they feel. And this is going to be a genuine, genuine deck. Make sure you, you, when you're stepping on board an old boat like this, check it. Check it for weight. Don't just go climbing aboard and fall through the deck. You're going to hurt yourself and you can hurt the boat. So, sounds all right. Okay. The decks are in bad condition. Look at that. Whatever this was attached to, it's not anymore. Unless, maybe it never was. No, there's a shadow there, so it was at one point. You have to be careful and not fall off the boat. That's a big one. There's something here. I mean, we got a hole there. But, you know, when you're looking at a free boat, even in really poor condition, it depends on what you're willing to do. You know, sometimes people have more sweat equity than they have money. And a free wooden boat can be the way to go, uh, for sure. Especially if you enjoy working with your hands. Most often, someone with basic handyman skills can do much of the repairs on a wooden boat, actually. So, so far, this feels all right. The, uh, the boxes, they look okay. The door aid, it's interesting, there's a window there. I'm trying to be super careful. You want to walk gingerly. Test everything first. Instead of just tromping around, especially places you can't see like this. If there's a tarp covering something, even just thrown over like this, they might be covering a hole. So don't just go stepping, because you might step right through a hole. A hole. And of course, one of the main concerns when you're looking at this is wasps. There might be wasps everywhere, you just don't know. Okay, so now, look here, we're getting into some serious issues. And and we gotta be careful where we're stepping. But you see that? Ooh, this is soft. All right, oh, look at that. All right, come check this out, buddy. So this, that's way soft, and they've covered it with duct tape. So any places you see tape or tarp, don't step there. There's nothing there. And then this, that's a visible hole. So just, when you're looking at one of these boats, be extremely careful when you're walking around on deck. You could punch a hole through, and there's probably fasteners, gnarly wood and everything you fall through you could rip your leg to pieces and if you're out in a boatyard like this if there's nobody around you could be really mangled and and nobody can hear you to come help you so depending but uh yeah you see that hole that's a bad sign right so i could take the hammer and start sounding listen to that that's bad 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 
So obviously this whole deck needs to be replaced. The whole thing. I wouldn't I wouldn't even I wouldn't even try to save any of it. The the teak is so checked. This is so so bad that it needs to be replaced. So that's one thing to think about. So that's so far the main issues we're looking at, we're making a list in our mind. We've got deadwood, rudder, bat hole, caulking, deck. Okay, let's uh let's make our way down. So the cockpit's solid? It's solid, it's secure. Okay, so that's good at least. And there's no checking in the cockpit, so the cockpit tub might actually be okay, which is good. Frame that stuff there is good, the hatch looks good. Yeah, I don't, there's nothing soft here. So let's see what we got. All right, let's see. Yeah, there's a lock on it somewhere. Okay. Always, when you're going in the boat, mask, safety glasses, always. You just never know, so. Okay, so now we're down below. Neat little layout of a boat, huh? Pretty cool. Look at that. Man, this is the nice thing about looking at really old boats like this. Look at this. Beautiful hanging lantern. Gosh, that is just gorgeous. Dickinson Newport. Wood stove, that's neat. Well, at least they do have a dehumidifier running. That's good, they've got ventilation going. The layout is cool. Look at this. Oh, it's printed. <laughs> I thought that was actually woven for a second. I was like, wow, it's printed. Okay, so what do we see up here? It's going with four peak. That's always a good sign, right? Mallets, guy doing his work. This is obviously not the way it was built originally, but it's awesome. These drawers, this is cool, cool, cool. I mean, the guy lived on it by himself for years and years and years. So, there's the head. And I'm not seeing, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get stung, but I'm not seeing wasps everywhere, which is a very good thing. And until, until like a week or two ago, he was here. So, first things we can see right off, the decks and the damage from the decks is extensive. Really, really extensive, unfortunately. So, see how bad? Actually, you know what? I thought that was going to go right in. I really did. I thought my spike was just like this. See that look? So this is bad. Frames. The beam. Oh, there's the decks. Look at that. Right through the deck. There's just nothing left of the decks at all. When thinking about rebuilding it, right? The deck is fairly easy, especially if you can build a little boathouse or some kind of cover. You just tear the deck off and redo it. And you can replace the beams and stuff fairly easily. They're not straight, but very nearly straight. I mean, there's damage here, right? There. The deck is just gone. But I do see splitting. I mean, it needs, a lot of this needs to be repaired. But now we want to look at the framing and the build. So we have to figure a way we can gain access to the frames. There has to be a way. Now, he's got ceiling planks here. There's no access to the frames there. So we're going to open the lockers. And that's the other thing. You want to open every single locker. Ah, no access there. Okay, what do we got here? Got all these buckets everywhere to collect rainwater, I'm sure. But now here's interesting. You see, look in the locker here. There's books. There's some water damage, but you know, this is all cloth. You would see this would be absolutely covered in mold if it was leaking into there. So that's a good, that's a good sign. Let's see what we got. Um, I, I'm guessing he's going to have ceiling planks 
the whole way. And in here, there's just zero access. It's solid. I mean, no access to the frames at all. That's unfortunate. Okay. Most of it's just shucking paint. So it needs to be repainted, but, I mean, there's not... I expected the spike to just go through. Now, you might... Whatever fastenings are up here, down in this in this beam, you're, you're going to find fasteners, rot in those fasteners. I, I can almost guarantee that. Just, just judging from the condition of the planks, of the deck, the deck planks, you're going to find rot somewhere along the, the fastenings. We're going to try and look in the build real quick and see what we got. Okay, what do we got? There's a ton of debris. Debris is a sign of rot, which obviously we know the deck's gone. Uh, but debris is usually the first major sign when you have debris gone. Um, it's nice that there's so much building access. Okay, let's look at the floors. Hand me the uh, pry bar. The long pry bar. So what we're trying to do here, you want to access the frames anywhere you can. You want to take your pry bar, and it's going to be hard to see, but you want to go, is that showing up at all, Ryan? You want to try to get underneath frames and see if you can move them. If you can move them, they need, they're bad, right? So far, that's not wiggling at all. Okay. No, and the plank's not wiggling. That's a lot of debris, though. Look at that. That is deep. That is a lot. Okay. So that's solid. So I'm seeing a ton of debris, and it looks mucky, but actually the in this area at the turn of the bilge this looks okay but now we want to have access to the bilge stringer the bilge stringer is very important um, it's what the sole a lot of times sits on and the frames crack at the bilge stringer so we have to look at that somehow you see all this debris look at this You want to put your pry bar underneath this and try to give it a wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Everything you can. Um, this is a very small snapshot of the vessel. Very small. We're not going to be able to determine a whole lot from this, but we can determine some things. What's that? Uh, okay. But we need to find the bill straight somehow if we can. But honestly, I'm looking kind of in the build. I'm not seeing a bunch of cracks. I'm not seeing the frames being broken. This thing needs, seriously needs to be stripped out and cleaned. Going into what would be the four peak. We can see the frames on the side of the hull at least. Which is going to be a good indication. So we... Like here, see here? The deck is gone there. Okay, we can see sunlight. So, inspecting the frames around areas of rot will give us an idea of what the rest of the frames are doing. So what I want you to do, take your marlin spike, I want you to pick at the edges where the frame meets the planks and see if, if it sinks into any of the frames first. Okay, go to the frame up from that. Actually, come come back to this one. See where this leak is? We want to see that. Oh, yeah. Is it going into it? Light. No, it's not. No, we're looking for it to sink in. On this side? Okay. Good as well. Go forward. Take this. Now you're going to put that under there and see if you can wiggle the frames or the planks behind it. All right. So go forward from there. Just just do a couple. You can't. We can't. Unfortunately, we can't look at everything. But you're just going to bounce around and, and see. Is it moving at all? Hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. That's good. 
Okay, go to the other side. Those frames actually look to be in poorer condition. First thing you do before you pry is check with the Marlin okay. spike. Now, when you're using the spike, I'm telling them, not you, Ryan. When you're using the spike, you want to go, wood is going to hold, it's going to rot where it holds moisture, so you want to go where the, the wood is meeting, where it's touching. And that's where it's going to rot, more, more often than not. Okay, now try the pry bar. So what we're doing with the pry bar, we're prying, holy cow, we're prying against the, uh, the frames to see how the condition of the fastenings. Is everything fastened well? Are they letting go? Are you about to spring a plank? And you want to you want to get in there. I mean, it, it should not be able to move no matter what you do to it. So, any movement? Slight on this side. Okay, point to it. That one. Slight movement on the planks or the yeah. frame? On the frame. On the frame itself. Planks okay. are absolutely solid. Solid. Okay, so now take your spike above your head. And you see these areas of rot where you can see the, the sky? Again. Start poking around at that with your spike and see. I'm going to go through it. Don't, don't not not the deck, it. the frame, the beam. Yeah. Is it going through the beam or is it solid? Well, Sounds pretty solid. pretty solid. That's interesting. The beams are just nowhere near as bad as I thought they would be. I really assumed that they were going to be... Looking at the deck, I thought it would be gone. Ah, this one here. How far right in? Right through it. Try to lift that white sole plate down there. All right. So look at the condition of those floors there. Also, I want you to look at the condition of the frames. If they're through bolted, I can't see if they're through bolted or mortised in. Through bolt. Through bolt. Okay. Yes, sir. So pry at those. Bronze keel bolts. That's a good sign. Bronze keel bolts is nice. Pry at the frames. Check for rot, which I don't think there's going to be any rot down there. Oh no, absolutely so. Vessels usually rot from the top down, not not vice versa. Yeah. Unless they're freshwater boats. Okay, so is there any wiggling? Try the pry bar. So what I need you to do now, Ryan, is look up in the peak, the forepeak, the anchor locker here. Take the take the phone and just look around, see what you see. See if you see a bunch of rocks. See, poke around with your marlin spike. Just see what you what you can figure out. We are looking pretty solid up here. Okay. All these originals? Yeah. Are in good shape. There's only a I mean only where the, the moisture is coming in from the from the deck. Now we're also not done with the hammer. That's the, the main thing, is you, 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 you take what you can see. That's the only thing you can do. You take what you can see and try to guess about the rest of it. We still have some more things to look at. Um, but for me, like I said before, the only thing that matters to me is the condition of the hull. Uh, I want to know the condition of the hull. You know what? Electrical... We'll look at it if we can. You're going to have to replace it anyway, probably, even even if you pay big money for the boat. You know, um, the engine, you can rebuild it. You can put a new one in. That's not work. I mean, yeah, electrical, it takes a long time to run things, and it'd be nice if the electrical was in good condition. It's a 110-year-old boat. There was no electricity on the boat when it was built. None. So somebody's cobbled together something. It is worth at least looking at, but 
I don't even consider that when I'm looking at a boat. The only thing I'm looking at is the condition of the boat. The, the frames, the joinery, the planks, that's what I care about. So we've, we're seeing some damage to the frames, but here's one of the things you need to check too. When you're looking around to ascertain how much the structure is damaged. Look at the joinery. Is the joinery tight? So anywhere here, we want to see is it opening up? This is not. Not here it's not. Is do the lockers open freely, you know? If they're jammed, if they're pinching, then you can see signs of hogging and sagging. And and the joiner in here, for even what we're finding, is actually surprisingly tight. Let's try to get into the deepest part of the bilge here. We need to pull this grate. So try to pull that up. Oh wow, it's a tray, huh? Is it full of water or just stuff? No, it's just full of stuff. Okay. It's a whole big tray. Wow. I don't want the tray to oh, wait. blow it into the village. Let's hear okay, it. and there's our rainwater. What well you know what's weird to me? You know how much rain we've been getting? Crap loads. Crap loads. And the boat is actually pretty dry. I mean, I'm shocked. With all the holes, you can see right through the deck. It's pretty dry. All right, so see these big, giant, beefy suckers? Those big frames? Sound those with the hammer. And then spike them. Let's see what we got. Mm, tap harder. Really way it. Okay. Other one on the other side? Ooh. Yeah. This one's actually coming apart. Yeah, it's gone. So tap the other one on the other side. Hit it. Okay, so those are hollow inside. Those are rotten. That's gone, that's gone. That frame you can see. Uh, pick at that frame, the one that's visibly gone. with your spike. This one over here with the toilet paper on it. Here's a good lesson for you guys, right? Don't leave paper out because paper turns into mush that can clog up a bilge pump in the worst time possible and then you can sink because you got paper. Be careful with your books, be careful with all of that. But that's just gone, huh? Oh yeah, look at that, it's gone. Okay. There's there's nothing to poke. There's nothing to poke. Well that was easy, huh? So that's rotted. So okay. Alright. Uh, I think we've seen pretty much enough. Will you put that cover back? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we want to look, just real quick, shine back in the engine room, or engine locker, <laughs> as it were. That's interesting. You can see he's actually got kind of a workshop. So this guy has crawled around in here. Look at that! Gosh! What kind of engine is that? Cool. That thing. I think Moses built that. That is so old. I have no idea. If anybody knows what this is, please post in the comments. I've never seen this before. It is really cool. Really, really cool. All right. I'm seeing some pretty good signs of water damage back there. The colors of the wood, it's not great. Yeah. All right, now, just for kicks, we're gonna look at basic electrical stuff. Man, it is on a hinge. And there's a wasp's nest, that's always good. You know what? It's not the sp spaghetti nightmare I thought it was gonna be. It's really not. I mean, there's some sketchy things. I think this is the battery charger, just clamped on there. But yeah, I'm not seeing it's not green, it's not heavily corroded. I mean, I don't know if any of it works. Um, I'm kind of afraid to try any of it, like lights and, and stuff, because you know, you never know if the wiring has been getting wet up here, and I, I don't really feel like being shocked. But, but as far as the way it's wired, I'm no electrician. But it, it looks clean. I'm not seeing signs of heavy corrosion. I'm not seeing a big spaghetti mess. It, it actually doesn't look too horrible. So there you go. What you want to look for 
if you're looking at electrical, you can try everything. Like I said, with, with this though, you see all the water damage. I don't want to touch anything and shock myself. So, you know, I before I do any of that, I would disconnect shore power, disconnect the batteries, and I would then check the conditions, connections of everything. But what you're looking for in there, you're looking for corrosion. You know, is it corroded to pieces? The other thing you're looking for is, you know, I'll show you again. I'll pull this open again. Look back here. You see back there? If this were like cobbled wires, you know, 10 wires on one thing and everything just kind of jammed in and, you know, uh, the breakers, you can look at the breakers and see, you know, do they have just tons of wires and tons of crap cobbled all together because things have been failing and is it corroded to pieces? And here it's not. So here it's actually decent. Not too bad. Okay. Something that's very important. We're looking at a 110 year old boat, right? But you have to look at this. If you're looking at getting a vessel, you have got to look at look at it from a logical perspective. You can't let your heart run away. You can't think we got to save this boat. You know, I don't want to see any boat scrapped, especially something like this. So I don't think it should be scrapped, but you need to figure out your finances, how much time you have, and your abilities when you're looking at anything, right? That's, that is of paramount importance. The right person gets this boat, it'll be sailing. This, I mean, this would be an amazing vessel to restore. The wrong person gets this boat, it'll be the end of the boat. So really, you need to figure that out. I think we've seen enough of the boat, I think. Um, I have a pretty good idea and we'll talk about what I what I think uh, as we're outside checking ourselves for termites but I'll, I'll give you my my general assessment of the boat um, and the pros and cons before we get back to Shalimar dude we have got to check each other for termites I haven't seen any termites I haven't seen any signs of termites but we cannot bring termites back to Shalimar so we are going to have to check us. So do that. If you, especially if you live on a wooden boat or a wood house and you're checking an old wood boat, you can carry larvae. You can carry anything. You need to check yourself. You need to brush yourself off. You need to make sure to check your shoes. Do not bring termites back to your house or to your boat. Period. If you if you do this for a living, like if I brought this into my wood shop, you know, I could I could destroy all of my wood stock, my whole shop, and everything by just going and looking at an old wood boat so so be mindful of that big time i like a boat i like a boat we were talking about the cockpit just now and it is cool i like the tiller the like he was saying a nice tight cockpit the the general the general layout of the boat you just don't see this anymore this this thing is you know over a hundred years old and and i love the utilitarian quality of it and you know what? I'm not bonking my head everywhere, and that is good. I, I'm thinking probably the owner built this, but maybe not. Maybe that was original. I love it. I just I love how rustic it is. I love the layout. This could be a really, really, really cool boat. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful. There is enough of the structure here that it's not hogging and sagging the pieces, the planks aren't buckling, but the deck is gone. The the whole deck, the beams, everything's got to come off. You know, um, much of the framing has to be replaced. So you're either going to be taking all the planks off, or you're going to be pulling all the interior out, or both. <laughs> um, it needs heavy restoration. You know, I mean. This is not one of those things where you could quick fix it. That being said, it's in for its age. 
pretty darn good shape, honestly. I mean, it's really not too bad. The, uh, and it wouldn't even be that expensive. You know, a lot of the materials I'm seeing, it's not like it's all teak or mahogany, you know. It's decently affordable wood. Um, it would be a good project. This would take someone, you know, a couple of years if they're just doing weekends. Or if they come and they just blast it out. If you got a crew, you know, you could save this boat. And I and I think it's I think it's worth it to save. I mean, just about every wooden boat I think it's worth to save. But so the moral of the story here, what we've learned and how to look at it. You need to assess what's wrong with the boat. First, before you do anything else, figure out the boat. Kind of make a list. And then figure out what you want to do. And it depends on what you want. If you just want to go sailing, right, but you want a wooden boat, well, then you need to get one that's in pretty dang good shape. And a free boat in pretty dang good shape can be hard to find. Um, but if you're looking for something special, this is a very special boat. And you have the time and you, and you want a hobby, this is a good boat for that, you know. Um, and it's a great way to learn. The good thing and one of the most important things to look at when you're looking at something like this, it's already broken, right? It's already not floating. You can't, you can't make it not float more than it's not floating now, you know, so you can't really mess it up. It's wood. So no matter what you do, you can fix it. Um, and in that, in that sense, it's perfect. It's not a giant, humongous boat. This boat is only I'm not sure, maybe 36, 38 feet, something. Um, and because of that, it's doable for one guy. One person could, could fix this whole boat. If you have a couple people, this would be great, you know. Um, but it is a lot of work. It's also free, you know. For free, you can have a boat that you can work on. You can get the materials and lumber. And if you really crack on it, you could probably have this thing rebuilt in six months to a year if you're really cracking with, with a couple of people. Um, and then you have a, a classic 110-year-old boat. That, and the thing about this boat is it's going to be worth a lot of money. You get this in good shape, this is going to be worth a lot of money. The Dickies Yard in Scotland is known for making good vessels. You can tell it. The boat is 110 years old with some areas of a pretty advanced rot. And the thing's not just falling apart. I mean, it's, it's actually in pretty good shape considering everything wrong with it. Joybird, Miami. Built in Scotland. On or before 1911. Awesome. If you or anybody you know is looking for a century-old classic sailing yacht, message me. Directly message me. And uh, we can make it happen. This thing is awesome and it's free. So, very cool.